Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We've got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Acts chapter 6, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Acts chapter 6. But the believers rapidly multiplied. There were, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea. They even chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Paraminus and Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. Stephen, a man full of grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. But one day, some men from the synagogue of freed slaves, as it was called, started to debate with him. They were Jews from Cyrene, Alexandria, Cilicia, and the province of Asia. None of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen spoke. So they persuaded some men to lie about Stephen, saying, We heard him blasphemy Moses and even God. This roused the people, the elders, and the teachers of religious law. So they arrested Stephen and brought him before the high council. The lying witnesses said, This man is always speaking against the holy temple and against the law of Moses. We have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy the temple and change the customs Moses handed down to us. At this point, everyone in the high council s stared at Stephen because his face became as bright as an angel's. Amen. So what did you think of Acts chapter 6? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Acts chapter two is a, I mean, Acts chapter six is a good one. Um, it starts out with seven men chosen to serve, and this is just how the church is beginning to become more organized. And you know, originally it's it's um, normal for us to rely on the pastor or the leader of of the church to you know do everything and you know have them for guidance, but God. Um, granted a lot of people gifts and abilities of leadership and you know the pastor should be focusing on shepherding and um, what does it say what it, I can't when you tell somebody else what to, what to do well anyway so they should be more focused on leading and um, be able to distribute responsibilities. God will entrust people with these skills necessary to handle all the different responsibilities of the church. Um, so it like I underlined spend our time teaching the Word of God. So I think that's definitely should be the number one important thing for the leader of the church to do, to do is spending their time teaching the Word of God. And then so then um, they 
so the brothers selected seven men who were well respected and full of spirit and wisdom and they gave them this responsibility so you know in in the different ministries you know people are chosen who are full of spirit and wisdom to you know per, per um, or to do these different things within the church. Um, so I think it's just important for us to ask ourselves, where can we serve in the church and how can we help out? What kind of gifts and abilities has God given you to, um, you know, contribute to your church? And, you know, just ask God to lead you. Try different things until you find your fit. Um, and this one, I like how they um, directly um, talked about running a food program, um, which I think is really important for churches to do, is to have a food program within their service. Um, so then um, I, I underlined also when they started talking about Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Um, I think that it's important to recognize that whenever you are full of faith, in the Holy Spirit, you are going to be persecuted against. There's going to be jealousy. You are going to come up against a lot of opposition. And I know that that kind of discourages people from going in faith. I know it has me in the past. You know, whenever I start, um, you know, reading the Bible too much, you know, I always, then people always say, you know, be careful because you know what happens when you get too close to God. That's when the enemy comes and attacks you. And I didn't want to be attacked. Like, who wants to be attacked? So I would you know, obviously draw back. And, um, you know, so that's something that we all have to be up against. And it takes courage and it takes strength. And that's not something that we can have on our own. It's something that we have to ask God for. We, has to, we have to ask God for his strength and for his protection and for him to defend us. Because it's still something that crosses my mind every day. Like, if like will I stop being attacked so much if I stop being so faithful to God um, will I stop being attacked so much if I um, you know stop spending so much time in the word and then you know then the Holy Spirit speaks to me and lets me know that then I won't have such a close relationship with God to protect me through the trials of life because regardless of whether you're close to God or not you're gonna go through trials in life but when you're close to God he can be there to give you peace and give you joy through your trials so in those situations I just have to pray a little bit harder to ask God to ease the burden to um, you know provide me peace in those situations to um, you know free my heart when I'm feeling pressed on all sides and again thank him for his grace to get me through those times when I just can't do it on my own when there's nothing that I can do um, when I'm doing the best that I can and just relying on his grace and without him you wouldn't have that so your situation would be a lot worse and I know you know the enemy is going to try to whisper in your ear like don't you know then you won't have so many trials you won't have so many hard times things will be so much easier for you like mentally if you would just stop spending so much time with God and you know it crosses my mind all the time but you know the Holy Spirit has convicted me and he's he's there's no turning back like I can't stop following God um, because I know where I'm going I know that this is only temporary I know that God will deliver me and he's been so faithful to me even when I didn't know that he was there protecting me and guiding me and giving me his grace so how much more will he do it now that I'm aware of it now that I know what he's doing now that I can point out the miracles every day um, so don't get discouraged because here this is a great story I mean well it's not really a great We'll wait till tomorrow. I'm not going to spoil, spoil it for everyone. But um, so they persuaded some men to lie about Stephen. So again, people are going to lie about you. People are going to persecute you. People are going to say things about you that aren't true. People are going to try to say, you know, anything that they can think of bad to try to dissuade you or to condemn you or to turn people against you. And they arrested him. Um, and you know they again the witnesses came forth and told the lies and this is just another thing to, sh to show you that just because people are religious doesn't mean that they are good honest people um, not all religious people are good uh, you know pe there's tons of um, wolves in sheep's clothing within the church and who claim to be doing the will of God but then they do things like this and it's just so sad like it's so heartbreaking and I can only imagine how deep 
God's pain must be to see and witness all the horrible wicked acts that go on on earth like I don't know how he can stand it like sometimes I can't even stand it myself just thinking about some of the things that go on and seeing you know the people on the street and the people just Sodom and Gomorrah so you know I just don't even know but then at the same time I'm so grateful that he didn't um, uproot the whole earth while I was still sinning and while I was still living in my wicked ways before I had been reborn and saved and given my life to Christ like what if he hadn't have waited for me then I would have been condemned as well so you know that thought alone is just what gives me a little bit of hope that you know he's still giving people a chance like he did me and I just have to be patient and wait for my my chance to be with him in heaven um so then um at this point, everyone in the high council was staring at Stephen because his face has be became as bright as an angel's. And I love this. I love how God showed up for Stephen in this moment and just said, like, he couldn't actually, well, he could do whatever he wants. But I just love that um, he just had that glow that says, there's nothing that y'all can do to me. There's no, nothing that y'all can do. Y'all can say whatever you want about me because my approval comes from God. I look to God for approval, for love, for provision, for everything that I need, for protection, for safety. And in this moment, when everyone was turning against him, his face just started glowing to let them know like, hey, this guy is touched by God. He's anointed. And I just love that. Um, but Tomorrow's another story, so I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.